So two videos ago now, I showed you this formula that we can use to generate confidence intervals. We haven't done any of that yet, um, which might be driving you crazy, but be patient, we will get there. Uh, so we know how to do most of this formula now. The plus or minus is a little weird. We'll talk more about that in a second, but we also need to address this guy. What is a critical Z score? Okay, how do we find them? That's what we're doing in this video. Because once we know how to find a critical Z score, we can use this formula and do real confidence intervals, which we'll do most of those practice with the last video or the next video. Okay, so, um, oh my goodness, my cats are going at it. So, here, let's start with a little leading question to get us into things. Consider the standard normal model Z. We talk about this before, the standard normal model with a Z, you know. It has a mean of zero and a standard deviation, a spread of one. Well, if you have a standard normal random variable, 95% of the data is between what two values of Z? Well, hopefully your empirical rule is ready to go and you say, well, a Z should be about two, right? Because 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So if we have a little graph, right? You should say that 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the, away from the mean. So 95% of the data should be between about negative two and positive two. But let's get a little bit more precise. How can we actually find the middle 95%? Think all the way back to unit five. It should be around two, but how can we do it more precisely? Well, if you remember in that section, the way that we answered this question is we said that if red is 95% of the area, then the blue tails together should be five, right? The tails must be 5%, right? Because that adds up to 100%. So each tail then is half of that. They're 5% together and it's symmetric. So each tail must be two and a half percent. So we found the middle 95% by finding what value is above two and a half percent of the data and what value is below two and a half percent of the data and we can do that with GeoGebra there are other ways but we'll be using GeoGebra so let's look at our normal model it's a standard normal model what value is above 95 percent of the data sorry what value is above five percent you can slide this around you can see Oh my goodness, I'm tripping over my words. We want the value that's above 2.5% of the data, right? Because, if I can find my window, of this. What value, what's the cutoff value that's above 2.5% of the data? So we can, you know, find it roughly, but we, let's be more precise. Let's actually type in 2.5%. And you'll get a Z value of it's close to negative two, just like we expected, right? Because 95% is within two stand, about two standard deviations. Well, it's really 1.96 standard deviations. So we can get much more closer here. We'll answer the question between what two values is Z? Well, between negative 1.96. And what value do you think is on the other side? It should also be close to positive two be above 97.5% of the data or below 2.5% of the data, up to you on how you find it. It's positive 1.96. Normal distributions are symmetric. So that's our answer here. And that's what a critical Z score is all about. Okay, notice over here, critical Z score, we use Z. Anytime you see the letter Z in a statistics class, it probably means standard normal. And I told you it it's a Z value that's determined by the confidence level. 
Well, that's all this Z is. That's all what the Z star is. Is it's just how far do we have to go? What are the cutoff values so that we have the middle 95%, the middle 90%, the middle 99%, whatever our confidence level really is. So what we're going to be doing in this video today is looking at different confidence levels and finding what their critical Z scores is, are, and we've already done the first one. What do you think the critical Z score is for a 95% confidence interval? It'll be 1.96. So we just did our work way up there. So I'm going to actually probably leave this blank. We could have put all of that work over there. Now I want you to model this, model this thought process, model this logic now for a 99% confidence level. How can we do all of this stuff for a 99% confidence level? If you have a hunch, I recommend pausing the video right now and trying to do it on your own paper and see if we get the same thing. If you're a little unsure, we can follow along together. Okay, so we, again, we have a normal distribution. All right, and now we want 99% to be between two intervals. So almost all the data we want to be in this red area. Well, if that's the case, then how much is outside of this area? Well, the blue tails should add up to 1%. So what is each tail? Well, it's each one is half of that. Half a percent. This is, gets a little tricky. Fractional percents are a little weird to work with sometimes. Ooh, weird to work with is fun to say. Lots of W's. Okay, so then what we have to do, right, is find what data value is above half a percent of the data. And similarly, and again, it's symmetric, so we really only need one. Similarly, what data value is below only half a percent of the data? That's how we'll find the Z-score. That's how we'll find that critical Z-score. So again, we can just go over here. Instead of 2.5%, half a percent. And remember, if, if, you're a little, uh, if you're a little rusty with percents, remember that you can convert a percent to a decimal by moving the decimal place twice. One, two, and then there's a zero here. We get, as a decimal, it's 0 0.005, like this. Okay, so that's what we typed in here, 0 0.005, and we see that a Z value of two point, let's round a, th it's conventional to round a three decimal places for most of these, 2.576. Is our critical Z score. And now that we've done that once, you can use these on your notes. When you're doing your homework assignments and when we're doing the next video as well, if we want to find a critical Z-score, we're just going to pull up this page in our notes and say, ah, we can use 2.576. But, you know, if you ever lose your notes, if your dog eats your notes, or if you're on a stranded island and you, need to, you really need to find this critical Z-score, you've got the tools. Although, actually, if you're on a standard island, stranded island... You probably won't have GeoGebra, but who knows? Okay, we'll finish this video. I want you to find the 90% confidence levels uh, or the critical Z scores for 90% and 80% confidence levels. Again, I really recommend that you pause the video, but it's up to you. So if you went through it, you'd get the same kind of idea. We want the middle 90%. That means there's 10% on the outsides which means each tail is 5%. You can do the same thing before, and you'll get a critical Z-score of 1.645. Not going to do all the steps, but that's an outline for it. For an 80% confidence level, you'll have 20% on the outsides. Each tail is 10%, and you'll use that to get the critical Z-score of 1.282. And it's convention to round these to three decimal places, but you could use more precision 
if you wanted to. All right, and what goes here would just be the same stuff that we put right here, just with some slightly different numbers. Let me know if you have any questions about these or if you want to see some more examples of what this looks like, where these critical z-scores come from. And finally, in the next video, we're finally going to circle back to this earlier thing and uh, actually calculate some confidence intervals and put it all together. All right. So uh, you won't want to go anywhere because you won't want to miss the next confidence interval statistics video. Woo.